Susan, you've been very open about seizing the opportunity to address some of the questions left by the first Purge film, some of the criticism. How satisfied are you with the Purge Anarchy as a reply to those questions? I'm very satisfied with the movie. I like the Purge Anarchy. Um, I like the movie more than the first Purge. Uh, we had a few more, we had a little bit more money to play with, which generally I'm against, but on the, for this particular concept, I think we, re the first movie was a bit of a tease and it was more of a home invasion movie. And I was really excited to kind of get outside and get to see the purge up close and personal. And, uh, and, uh, and I like this movie better. So, uh, so I hope everybody else does too. Well, I, I wanted to get into a, a little bit more in terms of people's attitude to horror. There seems to be an industry bias, almost a snobbery against horror as oh, a genre. Yes. And for you as someone working primarily in the genre, I was just interested to know if there were any frustrations for you particularly or any advantages in that kind well, of I attitude. Well, I think for me, it's an advantage. I love kind of being the underdog. I, I like making I, I like making sequels because people are cynical about them. And then if you make a good one, people are like, wow, your expectations are low. And I really like making horror movies for the reason, for exactly that reason that you said, that people are prejudiced against them and people don't think they're as valuable as dramas. And I really like that for a lot of reasons. One of the biggest reasons is it makes the people who love and make horror movies, the community is very close. We're not competitive with each other, much less competitive than I think filmmakers in other genres because you really kind of have to band together. And I think it's really short-sighted to dismiss it as a genre. There's some of the great filmmakers of our time, you know, made scary movies. Alfred Hitchcock is I, arguably one of the best filmmakers ever. And all he made was, almost all he made was scary movies. So, uh, so I think it's silly, but I like it. I like the challenge and I like to be the underdog. There's almost a sense, I know you have a theatrical background, there almost seems to be a sense of more of a theater spirit about the way that Blumhouse do things. But on the flip side of that, I wanted to really address the aspect of editorial control. I understand you give final cut to directors, how big a gamble can it be to relinquish approval like that? It's a big gamble with expensive movies, but we only make inexpensive movies, so it's really not that big a gamble. Sometimes the movies turn into big successes like The Purge, and sometimes they don't. We made um, a movie called Lords of Salem with Rob Zombie or The Bay with Barry Levinson, and they come out on VOD and they come out on iTunes and they get a small release, and we, make, we don't make any money on those movies, and the directors and the actors didn't make any money on those movies, but we don't lose. They, they recoup the investment from VOD and DVD. So that's, why, that's one of the reasons we're able to give directors more creative control than they usually get in Hollywood. Has there ever been a situation where you personally would have liked to jump in and, and change something? Oh my gosh, all the time, yes. Uh, on Barry's movie particularly, but there are a lot of... Usually, I'm, I'm more at peace, I think, because we make a lot of movies, we don't labor over the decision, and I'm more at peace, I think, with not getting my way. But every movie that we've ever done, there's at least one thing that I didn't would have done differently, and in some movies, there are lots of different things. Do you ever try to apply a little pressure or a little kind of... Oh, I, uh, it's not, we don't just give them creative control and say, do whatever you want and come back to us with the movie. We talk to them all the way through the process, and... One of the things I've noticed is when you give control to the director, the director wants your input much more mm -hmm. than if they don't have final cut because they're not worried about not getting to do what they want to do. So we give our input through script stage, through production, through editorial. We give a ton of notes. They don't always take all of our notes, but we give, we give a lot of input all the way through. And coming now to the, the kind of aspect of horror as a genre that needs to be taken more seriously, I know you're very inspired by character driven storytelling and you're a member of the academy now I so am I wonder I am. with with that insight can you see a time when horror will become a genre that's credible enough for Oscar no I don't think so I don't th I think it's uh I think it's I, I I mean I would be shocked if a horror movie was was uh was nominated for I think horror has always had a big place in cinema in the history of cinema there's always been horror movies but it's always kind of a stepchild and I don't think I mean to answer your question I don't think that's going to change and I'm fine with that I don't I don't my I have uh, many aspirations but it's not to win an academy award for a horror movie <laughs> and if we can close by asking if we instituted a milder version of purge night where you could kind of break in and take anything that you wanted if you were able to go and steal a screenplay from any studio kind of present or past for Bloomhouse to produce, what would you choose to take? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I could I could produce a movie in the past. 
That's Citizen Lena. Kane. I'd take Citizen Kane. Oh, gosh. That's what I'd produce. I'd be great. Imagine producing that movie. I'd love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Jason. You. We want to wish you best of luck for the opening here on the 25th. Thank, Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you.